this is going to be another question and answer video, but also I decided to just make it another deep and secret things episode because it's pretty deep. But it was a question about <clears throat> can a Christian be devil possessed? And I just figured I'd just go through the whole Bible and look at the work of unclean spirits, spiritual evil throughout the scriptures. So starting before the fall of man, there was a time before man when the Lord created spiritual beings to worship him. He gave them a free will and many of them rebelled. And ever since then, they have been against God and his saints. And you see the forces of darkness peeking out their ugly head at the beginning of your King James Bible. You know, we got fallen angels, we've got unclean spirits, and people have their theory on where those unclean spirits came from. There's all different kinds of theories. I've done studies on that before. But you see the forces of darkness showing up all the way at the beginning of your King James Bible. But let's go through every age in the scripture, or most of them, and see how they operated. You start out with Adam and Eve in the garden. Here, the serpent comes to Eve just like he does to most people in America, appearing as an angel of light, as it says he does in 2 Corinthians 11, 4. And what does he say to her in Genesis 3, 5? He says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He told Eve, ye shall be as gods. This makes me believe that Eve was familiar with the gods. And that was the spiritual beings who left the Lord in rebellion. And you read about them in Psalm 82. Psalm 82, 6 and 7, I have said, Ye are gods, and of all and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So he came to her as an angel of light and promised her some enlightenment. Did you notice most things in America that are filthy have flashing lights? Have you ever seen casinos and strip clubs and rock concerts? At the concerts, you put your lighters up. Everyone gets their phones, turns it off sleep mode, and waves it around. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He makes things look glamorous, flashing lights. Uh, the devil and unclean spirits are appearing to you as money-hungry TV evangelists, evil politicians, rich trash celebrities, and angels of light. To me and you... They look like the Munsters or the Adams Family because we have our Bible goggles on. To the world, they look like the peak of what they want to become. That is how Satan showed up before the fall. He was approaching two innocent humans. He had to appear as an angel of light. In America, he's approaching a more civilized people. I guess you'd call them that. People who've been raised up pampered with everything handed to them. So he approaches the people in this country as an angel of light. But that was before the fall of man. What about after the fall of man? The fall is when Adam and Eve ate the fruit. Sin came into the world through Adam. You know what happened after the fall? Cain killed Abel because of envy. In 1 John 3.12, it says Cain was of that wicked one. Envy is influenced by devils in James 3, 14 and 15 and 16. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. The forces of darkness would love for humans to fight amongst themselves. If you can divide and conquer, then it makes their victory a lot smoother. You see envy in every field and aspect of life. You see it greatly in churches. You see it in the workplace. Envy could be a sign you are under the influence. Now, I'm not so quick to just say someone's devil-possessed. They need to have a whole bunch of signs but it, it could be that they're influenced. Somebody be influenced by a devil. 
if they're just full of envy and a lot of strife going on. A church could be being influenced by unclean spirits if they're always at strife and envy with one another. After the fall, Adam and Eve began to have children, Cain and Abel. And there can be strength in just two or three gathering together in the name of the Lord. The unclean spirits knew they had to keep people at odds so that they wouldn't gather together in His name. Just like they don't want you to gather together today. that They want it to be a constant stay-at-home order. So the devil gets between the two brothers, Cain and Abel. He moves Cain to murder Abel. Um, you see a lot of preachers today want you to just stay at home. They, they're against gathering together as a church. They say you need to isolate yourself. I don't know about that. Unrighteous violence also is definitely a sign of unclean spirits at work. And that's what you saw with Cain and Abel. This was the beginning of a high level of violence that led to the flood. Eventually led on to the flood. In Genesis 6, we read, Genesis 6, 11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Which leads us to the next time period in this timeline of unclean spirits in the Bible. It's during the days of Noah. Do you know what they were doing during this time? The pursuit of happiness without God, just like you see today. In Matthew twenty four thirty eight through 39, it says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In the tribulation, it's going to be as it were in the days of Noah. Just like Jesus said in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is not talking about the last days of the church. It's the tribulation. But it is like that in America today as well. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. It's all about the pursuit of happiness. Not about the pursuit of truth. Truth brings burdens and sorrow for others. For everyone along with it. And people don't want that. They don't want truth. Since the days of Noah... We're about the pursuit of happiness. That is how the unclean spirits operated during those days. The gods, the false gods, those gods from Psalm 82 that die like men. The gods were eating, drinking, marrying, living life. So look how the unclean spirits showed up in Genesis 6, 1 through 4. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The sons of God are not the same sons of God as me and you. You can only make them me and you by shoving John one twelve which is not doctrine for Genesis 6, back into the book of Genesis. That is like shoving Sabbath keeping on the Christian today. It doesn't work. Those sons of God are the gods of Psalm 82 and Jude 6 that left their first estate and have to die like men. The angels that kept not their first estate saw the daughters of men that they were fair and probably said, wow, this looks fun, let's do it. So they saw how things were going in Genesis 6. People eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. So that's what they did. And I'm speculating, but I think there are unclean spirits that just want to have a good time. I believe someone who is into excessively living for the flesh would be more likely to attract one of these unclean spirits so that they can live that through that person's body. Also notice the word lasciviousness connected with the context of the angels, which kept not their first estate in Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5.19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, 
Ephesians 4.19 says, Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. I think someone who excessively lives for the flesh and walks in lasciviousness will attract unclean spirits who will encourage even more of this wicked lifestyle because they want to enjoy the pleasure of sin themselves through the person that they inhabit. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Now these were fallen angels. And I believe there's a difference between fallen angels and unclean spirits. I'm talking about spiritual wickedness as a whole here in this. But this shows a desire that spirits have to do the things that man's doing. They saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They saw people eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. There are most likely devils and obviously fallen angels who enjoy inhabiting a person just for the good time. But that's the days of Noah. That's what was going on during the days of Noah. What about under the law of Moses? God taught Moses how the children of Israel should worship. During the days of Moses, you have Moses giving the law. You have God giving Moses a pattern for the place of worship as well. So the devils definitely counterfeit that during this time. And I believe there are devils that crave worship. So they would most likely be connected with the graven images or statues during that time and certainly are today as well. In Leviticus 17.7, it says, And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Deuteronomy 32, 16, 17. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. Psalm 106, 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. No doubt about it. Unclean spirits were involved when Israel worshipped the golden calf in Exodus 32. Aaron makes a god for them to worship and even makes an altar for it. The devils won't worship. The devils saw how God was having them operate with Moses. He, they saw him uh, giving him the pattern f for the tabernacle. And they wanted to counterfeit the same thing. They wanted worship. They wanted people coming to them for worship instead of going to God for worship. For this reason, today you have the performers and celebrities possessed of the devil. They know people worship celebrities. So what better place to inhabit than in the false gods of our day? Now the next time we're going to look at is during the days of the kings and prophets. In 1 Kings 22, 21, and 23, it says, And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. You'll see the same thing in Second Chronicles 18, 20 and verse 21. God would allow lying spirits to get into the mouth of prophets as a judgment on the people for rejecting the real prophets. That is why this country is in a bad mess today. They rejected the real preachers, and now they're shacked up with preachers who want to scratch their ears. The most wicked men today are fake preachers trying to get everybody's money with a big smiling face that looks like the Joker and a lying spirit comes out of their mouth every time they open it. You can see when you read all of the acts of the kings, how they are completely possessed by devils. Especially men like Jeroboam, who starts his own false religion. Especially men like Manasseh, who sacrifices his own children. The stories about the kings of Israel and Judah show us that devils love to inhabit men with power, and that way they can corrupt society. This, this is why politicians are some of the most wicked people on the planet who speak lies and hypocrisy. They have their conscience seal, seared with a hot iron. The unclean spirits, they, they saw that things were operating through those kings and the prophets. 
So they got in those kings. And they got in a bunch of the prophets, most of the prophets. And, you know, you had Elijah that went against them. Against all those prophets of Baal who were cutting themselves. Self-mutilation, a sign of devil possession. And Elijah thought he was the only real prophet left even, but he wasn't. But that's what those unclean spirits was doing. They see what God's doing. They try to counterfeit what God's doing. Next, you have during the earthly ministry of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, the Lord Jesus Christ is tempted by the devil in the wilderness. He uh, And the devil offers the Lord something in exchange for worship. That is how the devil operates. They will offer you something in exchange for serving them, but they promise temporary things. Why would the Lord want the devil to give him the kingdom that would be temporary when he was already king over both kingdoms and will one day reign over it eternally? Why would you want to trade something that's eternal for something temporary, just so you can have it right now? The Lord Jesus Christ, during his earthly ministry, casted out many devils. In Matthew eight sixteen, it says, When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Notice he cast them out with his word. If you put the word of God in you, believe them and apply them, then you can cause the unclean spirits to leave. It takes more than just turning over a new leaf and cleaning your life up. You need to get saved and get into the words of God. Jesus gives the truth about an unclean spirit leaving a man. In Luke eleven twenty four through 26, it says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return into my house. Whence I came out, and when he cometh, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. The Holy Spirit's house is the body of the believer. The unclean spirit uses the body of a lost person. For a house, he and he, if he leaves it and comes comes back, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. It's because the man found religion when he left. He cleaned his life up, but he didn't get saved. He becomes more wicked than he was before because now he's not only devil possessed, but he's also self righteous through his religion. Some of the most wicked people you'll ever meet is self righteous, devil possessed religious people. Jesus also gives the disciples power to cast out devils. In Matthew ten seven and 8, he says, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Casting out devils like the apostles did is not happening today. That was one of the sign gifts of an apostle. I'm not saying you can't pray that a devil would leave a person. I'm not saying you can't get in the word and, and fast and pray and get a devil off of you that way. I'm just saying it isn't done today the way the apostles did it. And the Catholic priests that claim to do exorcisms using holy water and a cross, that's not getting rid of devils. The devil-possessed man, uh, known as the maniac of Gadara, had some strange characteristics about him that we see in the Gospels. He had supernatural strength. He could break chains. He was weirdly emotional, just weird, like he spent his time crying. Self-mutilation, he cut himself with stones. He wore no clothes. Devils caused people to want to show their nakedness. He believed the fundamentals of the faith. The spirits in him knew Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and they believed in hell as well. They said, Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? He had a weird obsession with Jesus. You'll notice he ran and worshipped Jesus. Some lost men don't claim to be saved, but they constantly talk about Jesus Christ. It's strange. Now, during the time of the church today, during the time of the church age, today at least in this part of the world, we really aren't seeing the same type of devil possession that Jesus Christ and the apostles saw in this part of the world. The devils are appearing as angels of light and coming off very glamorous to the world. When people come to this country, I've heard them say, they. this guy just said to me the other day, and I thought this was crazy that he said this. He said when he came to America, he, he, he believed that the sin is way more enticing. It's way more glamorous, way more pretty to look at. That was crazy for him to say that as I was making this study here. And in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen and 15, it called 
the devil, an angel of light. It calls his ministers, ministers of righteousness. They transform themselves into that. And that's what they're, that's how they're operating right now. We aren't casting out devils with holy water and crosses. We are fighting spiritual battles. Second Corinthians 10, 4 says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are spiritual weapons. Ephesians 6, 12 shows us we're fighting spiritual battles against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I believe the devils are inhabiting the celebrities, the TV preachers. I believe they are involved in the LGBT movement and the government. All of these things come off very glamorous to the lost world. They come off civilized to the lost world. Not to us, because we got our Bible goggles on. But to them, I mean, it's just glamorous. It's the peak of what they want to be. And there are so many shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures and things like that. These are just people claiming to find houses and places haunted by the spirits of dead people. And a lot of these are obviously fake. However, there are real hauntings. Uh, there are less, what I believe is there are less sinister spirits playing around with people. It's not dead people. It's unclean spirits. And even though they may not be as sinister as the people behind the sex trafficking rings, the spirits behind that, it's these less sinister spirits that's playing with people in these so-called haunted houses it's still an, an uh, attempt to discredit Christianity in the Bible. They get people believing that their spirit floats around the world after death instead of going to hell and burning. Maybe they inhabit a person. These devils inhabit a person and the family calls a Catholic priest to come and exorcise the devil out. So the devil leaves the body on purpose, not because the Catholic had power, but to trick people into thinking the Catholic Church does have power to cast out devils. Make them think that is the real church. See, it's all about deception. That's how they're working today. The question comes up, in this age, can a born-again Christian be devil-possessed? You see arguments back and forth among Bible believers. And when Bible believers say a Christian can be devil-possessed, they aren't meaning that the devil can get your soul or dwell in the body of the believer with the Holy Spirit. A Christian can be possessed in the sense of his flesh. So many times people forget about the flesh and the spirit. The man in 1 Corinthians 5 had this happen. In 1 Corinthians 5, 5, it says, To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. If he was delivered to Satan, then he was in his possession. A Christian can give himself over to unrighteousness and a devil can direct him if he gives in to that. In Acts 5.3 it says, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? I don't believe a saved person can be the house of unclean spirits like the lost person we spoke about in Luke 11, 24 through 26 However, the devils can get their flesh, their health, and everything except their soul. It isn't like the case of Saul in the Old Testament where he would have the Spirit of God one minute and then, an un and then an evil spirit the next minute. We can't lose the Holy Spirit. We can't lose our soul to the devil. The confusion just comes when people don't remember the saint has two natures. We have the sinful flesh that can be under possession, but we also have the new man. The devil can possess your flesh he can't touch your soul. He can't break the seal. You're sealed to the day of redemption. But now what about the tribulation? During the tribulation, the unclean spirits are going to have an all-out free-for-all. In Revelation 6, 8, it says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that set on him was death, and hell followed with him. The inhabitants of hell are literally going to come out onto the earth during this time and walk the streets. They will still be seeking worship. In Revelation 9.20 it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the work of their hands, that they should not worship devils. A long time ago I saw the trailer or the preview for the, the Goosebumps movie, the, the second one I believe it was, with Jack Black where the characters were coming out of the book, out of the R.L. Stein books and walking the streets. I thought instantly of this verse. That's what it's going to be like. The devils are going to, or the locusts are going to come up out of the bottomless pit. 
in Revelation chapter 9, you're going to have intense demonic activity during the tribulation. In Revelation 18, 2, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The devils will still be working through false preachers and rulers during this time. In Revelation 16, 13, and 14, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. The ten kings are most likely devils. And Revelation seventeen twelve. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. The, those ten kings with the Antichrist, I mean, the, anti, the Antichrist is going to be the devil incarnate when he gets back up, when he resurrects. It's going to be an all-time high of demonic activity during the tribulation. But then, here comes Jesus out of the clouds. He's, he's coming down out of heaven. Heaven opens up. Here comes Jesus Christ on a white horse with ten thousands of his saints. He cleans house. And then in Zechariah 13, 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. Now listen to this. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Finally, no one will have to worry about any unclean spirits. It will be the greatest time the world has seen. The devil will be chained up until the 1,000 years are over, and then he'll be loose for a little season. However, it's very short-lived. He's defeated and cast into the lake of fire. Then you've got eternity that comes up. Throughout eternity, there will never again be a threat of unclean spirits or the devil. In the city, they can't enter in. They can't leave the lake of fire. In Revelation 21, 27, And there shall no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You're not going to have to worry about the unclean spirit or the devil in eternity ever again. I mean, it's, it's over for them. They're going to be tormented forever in a lake of fire. But I hope this has answered some questions, maybe answered more questions than that person had to begin with. Do I believe a, a Christian can be devil-possessed today in the sense that the devil can get everything except your soul? The answer is yes. He can. I mean, <coughs> when you say, can a Christian be devil-possessed, people automatically think you're saying that they can get your soul and you lose your salvation and that they're indwelling you along with the Holy Spirit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they can get everything except your soul. They can get your flesh. They can get your health. They can get your family. I mean, they can get everything. But this has been just a quick study on the subject of unclean spirits throughout the Bible.